To this day, uh, turbulence is regarded as an unsolved scientific problem. We need better turbulence models to build better vehicles that move through air and water, to design better wind turbine blades, also entire wind farms, and we need turbulence models to simulate and understand uh, meteorological patterns, the ocean currents, uh, dispersal of pollutants in cities, and of oil spills in the ocean. In my research group, we study and develop mathematical and computer models to uh, simulate turbulent flows. Imagine a cumulus cloud that has bulges of many different scales, ranging from kilometers down to millimeters. Just to represent that kind of complexity of shape and movement is really challenging. One of the uh, developments we have made in, in, in my group has been what's called the Lagrangian dynamic subgrid model. It's a way of uh, teaching the computer to learn about turbulence while it is performing the simulation. And then we essentially take the results, we resize them and apply them as a model for the small-scale eddies. That's been a, a kind of a, a breakthrough. The key insight was that that learning process had to be done following fluid elements as essentially following the flow, if you will. And since then, we've been applying that approach to simulate a large number of different applications. Here at Hopkins, uh, the interdisciplinary nature of fluid mechanics, we've been able to reflect that very well in a center. It's called the Center for Environmental and Applied Fluid Mechanics. We have developed the Johns Hopkins Turbulence Databases, which is a repository uh, that is served uh, to worldwide users, and it's uh, one of the largest uh, repositories uh, in, the, in the field that's uh, been very helpful to researchers worldwide. These advanced models, one of the applications has been to simulate uh, complicated flows in entire wind farms. Some of the classical theories of something called turbulent boundary layers can actually be uh, applied to understand the overall features of turbulent flows in very large wind farms and actually to try to understand how the kinetic energy that really lives in the wind that's far above the turbines how that's entrained down into the array of wind turbines where the energy can be extracted uh, more efficiently. And these insights, I think, are going to become more and more relevant as we build larger and taller wind farms and wind turbines uh, that are needed uh, as we move to a more sustainable energy future. And the applications, again, are really important to society, uh, be it from designing the next generation of energy systems or environmental protection to just basic understanding of the fluid world that surrounds us uh, everywhere.